Hey everybody, come digitize with me. I'm gonna show you how I use the Embird program to actually digitize an historical embroidery that I'm gonna be using on my Zamara project. And TLDR, a Zamara is a Renaissance robe that was popular fashion accessory during certain parts of the later part of the Renaissance. So let's go look at my laptop. Okay, so starting off, we have this portrait here. I'm going to insert the date here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we have this wonderful pattern right here. Anytime you can get a picture that's exceptionally high quality, you can really get in super close. And that's really important for being able to isolate the pattern so that you can digitize it well. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to crop it. We have a very nice straight-ish pattern that looks very clear right about here. And I think I'm capturing enough of the repeat. File save as so that we don't end up with completely getting rid of this fantastic phenomenal picture and we still should have really great detail when we zoom in beautiful okay so you're going to need that image in order to upload it into the ember software okay so first things first we go up here this is the studio plugin first thing i do is i upload the image that i just got so i'm going to import the image I don't really know exactly what this is, so I just, I you can say yes or no. It doesn't really seem to have much of an effect. I just say no. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, okay, so here we have the image. You can see that the pattern itself, the repeat pattern, is not exactly straight. And so what's cool about this is you can actually go in here and you can rotate to vertical and you now have, like, let's, let's choose this straight line right here because we already have it, right? And that's going to straighten out our pattern for us. There. So we have now our pattern. We are ready. And now we can go in, we can zoom in, and we can start laying our actual digitized pattern on top of this. And this will be kind of like, well, we're going to be tracing it, basically. But before we can start actually making the embroidery, we need to go first and look at how they would have done it back then. Looking in Patterns of Fashion, you can see lots of examples of various different ways that they embroidered things. And one of the things that stuck out the most to me was a cloak, actually, from the Germanish National Museum, showing pretty much very similar patterns. The description of it in Patterns of Fashion reads, it is embroidered with couched gold and silver metal cord, and the edges are bordered with a thick braid of crimson silk and gold metal thread. This makes a lot of sense for what I think we're seeing in the painting, too. So the only question now is how do we get that cord looking feel from the embroidery that we're going to be making? We actually have some interesting options for this. Essentially what we're trying to do is make a path and everything has to connect to each other. And then you're going to rehoop this pattern to make a continuous pattern. So what we need to do is we need to find out where the beginning of this, you can pull down off of here and you can make your own little guides. Um, so like, let's say the beginning of the pattern starts here and it ends here, right? Because this is where the beginning of the same pattern is. Okay, so we have that established that we're just gonna be digitizing from here to here. You can do longer, but I like to do smaller bits because why not? Then you can just duplicate, it's easier to do. What's kind of neat is this is the path tool right here. So if I was to make, let's just really quickly make a path, okay? These little things in between these can move and bend. Um, these kind of, the squares tend to make more pointy things. That's just something you have to work with when you're doing it. So let's say I go like this and here. Here we go, we click our little, yes, I'm done. Yay, our first pattern. Okay, this is where the fun begins. So we can click on here and we can click parameters. And here we have all of these options for um, what we can do to transform this line into the various different stitches that we want. So width obviously is gonna be how wide the stitches are gonna be. Sketch is kind of like just a, well, I'll show you. Um, Cause you can actually go in on here and, and look at down here, you can click 3D and it'll show you what it's gonna look like. I don't really use it much cause I don't really like it. <laughs> Here you have samples and you can have, you have various different stitches that it will create for you. So that might be something for us to explore if we're trying to make something 
chain stitch, triple bean stitch. I will use the triple bean stitch every once in a while if I'm doing uh, black work. Because it's better than just a single. It makes it a little thicker. Here you have your min length and your max length. I always make them the same, but I, I, I again, this is a mystery of the Embered software that I haven't figured out yet. Satin stitches is pretty cool. Let's make our density a little higher, like a six. And then if we take our width down a little bit, just because this is a small pattern, and we generate the stitches, you can see that we've made satin stitches. So pretty, and that's what the stitches would look like. So that's one option. We could do it like that. We might end up doing it like that. However, for my uh, Eleonora de Toledo project, when I did the pink dress, um, I actually went in and I kind of played around with something else which is when you go into parameters, I think it's border. And here, look, there's a, there's a rope thing. They have different shapes of things that you can choose. Um, I'm not sure how rope is going to look quite honestly, because this is a pretty small pattern again, but let's, why not? Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, no way, <laughs> no way, nope. Okay, so we're not, not gonna, that was not correct. Let's just go back to satin stitch for a second. I meant to do that. I just wanted to show you. <laughs> okay, moving on. Right click makes your numbers smaller and left click makes them bigger. Okay, this number here is actually the space between your repeat. The density is going to make the pattern like more dense. And then the width is gonna be how wide the pattern is going to be. So I've got two of the patterns here. And what I'm doing is I'm just going in and I am duplicating. And this way I can sort of play around with what different patterns I like and different parameters. What we want to do is we want to go in, we want to digitize the pattern, and then we need to figure out exactly how wide we actually want the border to be. So we can size this up and make sure that everything, all the parameters that we're setting on these things are looking A-OK. -okay. But for current moment, at the current moment, I'm just gonna show you these two things here. So in this parameter, this is the chain stitch with these particular settings. You get kind of what looks a little bit like finger loop braid, which is cool because that's probably how they made some of their cording that would have ended up on these things anyway. And this is just another version that kind of, I mean, I guess this would be kind of nice if you wanted to do the two colors like they talk about in um, Patterns of Fashion. So I'm not sure how I feel about doing that. I kind of just want to stick to gold. I don't think I'm going to do gold and silver. That's a bit extra even for me. And obviously here is the huge, huge sand stitch that we're not going to use right now. I am going to, I'm not gonna use this one. So we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna put this here. We are going to finish up this pattern here and then we will go and size up and figure out how big we want this thing to actually be. Cool, so there we go, we've got both of our patterns. We can now figure out what size they need to be. I don't generally make the patterns exact because these are meant to look like they were sewn on by hand and I tend to like the imperfections. I think they make them look more human. You can absolutely go in and make everything completely mirror each other. Um, I don't do that. People aren't perfect. I kind of love that. Here's where things get awesome. We want to know how wide this is, correct? Here's what you can do. You could take something fairly uniform across many people, like this, an eyeball. Measure this, measure your own eyeball, and then via maths, you know, measure this, and then you will be able to calculate what the width of this actually probably is in ratio to your own dimensions. Boom. So I just did that with my eye, and this is about two and a half inches wide. And also, wow, that is some significant bling. So that now we can go in here and we can make this, this whole pattern here two and a half inches wide. I'm going to erase the image. Now we are just left with the pattern. And now we can go in and we can change this to the Brother Quattro, and we can, we're just going to do regular. 
because it's already like that. Okay, cool. So, so now we're gonna go in and we are going to do what two, two and a, no one and a quarter on either side while my child is screeching like a raptor. Okay, here we go. We've got our two and a half inch width and I've gone in and added guides that kind of look right, right about right for the stripes. We are going to just select this whole thing and then we're gonna make it big enough to fit that area. Now we are gonna go in and we are going to play around with our parameters again. I think we're at a really good place now. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. We've got our width at 1.5 millimeters, our density at like 3.8. I could probably make that four, let's say. Yeah, you try, try not to make things too dense because when they get that small, it's, it, your machine's gonna struggle. Um, and then we've got our density of four. That's pretty much 3.5 is the spacing between everything. It's looking really great. I really like this. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other pattern. Beautiful, so now that's really cool. That's actually really cool. Next, what I would do is make my lines here, you know, replicate this pattern in a row so that we end up with everything that we can possibly fit on this hoop. So I wasn't paying attention. There's actually one more motif. I'm gonna go ahead and make that now. Sometimes when you add an image back after you've already erased it, it can kind of mess up things a little bit. So I'm actually choosing to start a new file with just this design and then I'm going to merge it into the other one. So we already saved that in the other file. I'm going to go in now and I'm going to do merge. Here's arena motif number two. There you go. That's, it's, that is, it's as easy as that. Isn't that awesome? Okay, we're gonna take that, size it up to the right size. Oh, it's a little, it was a little crooked because we never straightened. Um, that's okay, I can show you how to do that too. The transformation window. We are going to move it just a little bit that way and apply it. And it's starting to straighten out. I'm gonna apply it one more time. Mm, actually, no, that wasn't good. I'm gonna undo that. Close, undo. I think that's the straightest we're gonna get it for right now. That's actually really good. I think it needs to be a little bit smaller. The scale isn't quite right. That's pretty good. I think that's pretty good and I think that's where we're at. So now we need to make sure we gotta go over here to this order right here. This is the order, this is your stitch order. Before you do anything else, you gotta make sure this is in the right order. So that would be the first motif, that would be the second motif, that would be the third. This skipped over one. Take this here, right click it, push it here, insert before. Now we've got the right order. Okay, this one, same thing insert before, now you're in the right order. We are gonna have jump stitches. I'm realizing that now. That's okay. Some machines will trim those for you um, and sometimes you will have to do it yourself. But it's basically just going to be, wherever it ends up at the end, it's gonna jump to the next thing where it starts, jump to the next thing where it starts, jump to the next thing where it starts, you just trim them. So I'm not actually going to digitize these lines. And the reason why is because I remember that initially when I tried to do that with the pink gown design, it was really difficult to keep the lines straight. You are going to have, threads are going to pull just a little bit. They are sometimes gonna make little wrinkles. It's really so much better if you just make the pattern. It's easier to match up. If it's a little askew, it's not as noticeable. And then what I do is I go in and I make those lines with Sutash. I did that on my skirt, which I will show you. Now I'm gonna take this design. It's pretty much done and ready. We're gonna test it out because this is the moment of truth, if it's actually going to work or not. But first of all, we gotta make sure we save that. Right, we definitely need to save this. Design, compile, and put into Enbird Editor. We're gonna skip this for now. Here it is, and this is what it's gonna look like. You can see all the stitches up close. Here's what it's gonna look like in the hoop. Everything's good. Gotta go get our USB. Save as. 
Let's go into E. Here we are. We want to make sure we save it as the actual file that we are going that our machine reads. That helps a lot. Otherwise, you're not going to see it on the USB. It's just not going to exist. So, for my brother machine, it's PES. Press OK. Name it something. Arena Cloak. No, Arena Zamara. It's not a cloak. Save. S2 wall. This is just if you want to specify threads. I don't really do that because you're just going to use whatever you have anyway. Yes, all. Okay, and it's telling us it saved everything. It has to notify us five million times about everything that it does. We are now ready to go test it out on the machine. I'm using a polyester fabric just because I am testing this out. I don't want to use my silk just yet. I'm using my 8x12 hoop and then I'm using three sheets of my middle weight pre-cut stabilizer because I just don't have the larger stuff, but this should be enough stabilization. No, these are not pieces of paper. <laughs> Great, we are gonna push down. Tighten everything. Now I'm just gonna pull the fabric a little bit so that everything is nice and taut. Definitely don't do this with velvet. I really hope this works. We can fix it though, if it doesn't. Do you see this? It's working! It looks like cord! Oh my gosh! It's done! Let's see what we got! Oh. This is gonna be so much better on the green silk, but like just so you can get like an idea. It came out so great. I can't believe that this is an embroidery machine program. Seriously, it looks like cording. I'm so excited. And if you wanna know more about the other things that you need in order to digitize, see this video. Thanks for joining me, Salty Possums.